and also you over here, I think in the whole world, we're like drowning in health information. We're getting so much advice about what we ought to eat that's healthy for us and, and what we ought not to eat. And I mean, we hear it from our friends, we hear it from our family, we hear it on the radio, we hear it in television. Every magazine you open, you know, it's something about eat this, don't eat that. So we're getting so much information and, it, and it's, it's just about impossible to sort through. Um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you that almost all of it's, I don't know if this, there's a word that I would use in, in American English, I don't know if it's too crude in, in uh, I'll just say it, crap. Most of what you can <laughs> we can get away, we can get away with that word in, in the U.S., we can't get away with other words in the U.S. that mean the same thing. Um, so, uh, and, then, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you nine myths, things that you probably believe that I think aren't true. Um, and so I'm going to tell you so much that, that isn't true that I don't think you're going to be able to believe me. You're going to, at the end of this, you're going to go, ah, you know, that's just, that's too different. I can't believe all that. But my goal isn't for you to believe all that. My goal is for you to think, hmm, maybe what I'm doing right now isn't working for me, and I might try that and see if it works. So that's my goal, is just to kind of offer an alternative vision and then and then, you know, if, it, if, if what I offer as that vision is attractive enough, maybe you'll try it. But it's, it's more than you can believe based on me standing up and talking for half an hour. Uh, okay. I'm also going to talk just generally about, about um, you know, kind of people and the biology of people. I'm not really going to address specifically or not very much the whole idea of Asian culture and the fact that people eat somewhat different here than they do in the U.S. Because my feeling is we're all basically people. And although we get raised in different cultures, you know, what's going on inside our body is almost exactly the same. Uh, and then Kelly, Kelly's going to do the whole part after me, and she's, where she's really going to put this in the context of how do we change, you know, how do we try and think about changing our lives practically, given what I've said now. Does that all make sense? Yes. Any, any questions or issues there? All right. I am going to give you the world's quickest nutrition lesson to start. Okay, um, just to, and my goal here is to keep everything really simple. So um, when we eat, um, I mean, let's just ask: what What are the reasons that we eat? Maybe we can come up with three or four reasons. To survive. To survive. Okay. Yeah. And then what is that? Why Why do we eat to survive? To Energy. Okay, so energy is one of the reasons we eat. What's another? Pleasure. Pleasure. Yep, exactly. <laughs> oh. Definitely. Oh, yeah. We eat for energy and pleasure. Eat him off. This yeah. emotional yeah. friendship. Friendship, yep. Yeah. It's something, and I'll just, I mean, I'll call, yeah, friendship. It's something we do together. Friends. Friendship, friends. fellowship. Friends. Friends. Be stress. Be stress. Be stress. Be stress. Yeah, be stress. Yeah, yeah. That, that's almost like here with something to do with, yeah, we, we like treat ourselves, our uh -huh. stress, by Okay. Yep. Uh, there's one more I'm looking for, but. It's habit. Habit, yep. For sure we do it for a habit. Nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. Bored. 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 Because we're almost never really hungry. We've got food around to eat again before we get hungry. But I mean, you ask people, and you know, 200 years ago, it's probably answer number one: I'm hungry. That's why I eat. <laughs> okay, so right, that's why we eat. Now, um, and we'll, I'm going to focus first on kind of the, the, the biology part of it. Uh, when we eat, food has there's two kind of big categories of food, of, of the way you can break down food. Um, one is what we call 
micronutrients, and the word micro means small, and the other category is macronutrients, which macro means big. So uh, we're going to talk about both of those really briefly. So the micronutrients, micronutrients, there's really two categories. Can everybody read what I'm writing? Is that that's working? That's a micro. Yes. There, what's a micronutrient? Can anybody think of examples of what are micronutrients? Micro. What's that? Vitamins. 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 Yeah. Minerals. Yeah. Stop. You've got it. Those are the two big ones. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep saying things, I might not write them down. <laughs> Vitamins and minerals. Okay. Are the two things? And, and when, I, when I say that, there's there's if people count. Um, let me say that. And then there's macronutrients, which are the big parts of what we eat. Then there's three of those. So who <coughs> comes to get gluten? Protein. 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 Yeah. What's another one? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. And fats. Okay, now there's another word that I want to write here, which is the word essential. Essential, essential in this context means in our body is made up of like, I don't even know, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, different compounds, different things in the body. We can make all of those ourselves except for. 44 things. There's 44 things that we can't make ourselves, um, and so we have to. We have to. Uh, I'm not going to get the number exactly right, but I think it's it's basically. There's about 28 vitamins and minerals that that we have to eat. We have to consume them in our diet. Vitamin C. We can't make it. We have to. Zinc, copper, you know, all these various little things that selenium we need tiny ones of. There's 28 of those that we need to eat. Those things make up how much of our diet do you think is made up, I'll ask you, of micronutrients? Any idea? It makes up about 1% of our diet. So only about 1% of our diet is, is micronutrients. It's, and not only are they small, but we don't need very much of them. I mean, it's just a tiny part of what we eat. So if we have 100 you know, spoonfuls of food in a day, only one of them is kind of made up of, of all of these things. Um, of course, it's all mixed in. And then among the mac macronutrients, there's, there's 14 um, what we call 14, I'm not sure exactly, but it's either 14 or 16, the rest is 28. Um, amino acids, which are, amino acids are the little building blocks of proteins. Okay, but I mean, this is kind of a technical detail, but you get them when you eat things with protein, you get the you get big chunks kind of strung together of amino acids and they get broken down in your stomach and that's how we meet that. And then anybody know where the other two are? There's two essential fats, okay? Um, now, they, we don't need very much of those fats. Turns out we only, people aren't even sure. I mean, it's so low. Um, but it's probably less than 1% of what we eat is essential. And the number varies here on amino acids. Uh, how much of that we need. You, people say, oh, we can get by with 5% of our diet. Some people say we need 15% to be optimally healthy. I mean, there's kind of discussion. I'll just use this, this kind of intermediate number of 8%. Okay, so if, if what we need as kind of building blocks, 1% is kind of the, these micronutrients, 8% is the amino acids we need, 1% is fat, what is the other 90% of our diet for? Energy. Energy. Yeah, for fuel. So that's the other 90, 
90% is fuel. Okay, so there's three fuels up here. Protein, carbs, and when I say, let me explain a bit about the carbs. When I say carbs, that's, carb, that's short for carbohydrates. Right, and I'll talk a little bit more about carbohydrates okay. in a minute. Okay, so 90% of what we eat every day is simply for fuel. You know what, in that, when you say fuel, it makes the, you know, give it our, our, our heart the energy to keep beating, to, it's giving our, our brain the energy to keep thinking, it's giving our muscles the energy to move us wherever we are. So 90% of what we eat every day is strictly for energy, and our body can use all three of these sources very well for energy. Okay, so when you think about, what do I have to eat? I have to eat, you know, a certain amount of these vitamins and minerals. I need a little bit of fat, but that number is so small, and we eat so much fat that we, we always get plenty anyway. Um, this number of protein is also so low that in a modern diet, in Singapore, U.S., any developed country, you're getting way more than 5 or 8%. I mean, typical numbers will run 20 to 40% in people's diets. So actually, you know, you don't need to worry about this, you're getting that, you're getting these fats, you're getting more protein. So what your diet is really about, it's, it's about meeting your energy needs. And so that's, and that's also where we get into trouble, is how we meet our energy needs. Okay, so that was fast, and I did a lot of detail there. So let me answer any questions people have. Yeah. Okay, this energy, okay, right. which is our action, I'm doing. Yeah. What about any food that is for growth, that's one, and any food for repair, are they separate? <laughs> one is growth, one is repair. Yeah, well, none of us oh, in this room hopefully are growing. I mean, growing is something little people do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> growing up. Um, and, and, but when we build, I mean, we're, what we're building, generally the big thing we do is we build structure with protein, and then we build bones and other things you know, with, with some minerals. Um, but for the most part, the growth is coming from protein. And likewise, when we, we are continually, in fact, and the reason we need this 8% is because we're, our body, I'm talking about always being new, uh, I mean, your body is always turning things over. Cells last a certain amount of time. You know, the, a red blood cell lasts about three months. And then your body gets rid of it, and, you know, puts another one in its place. So it's always creating, Red, new red blood cells. Um, your hair is a visible thing, you know, it's always growing and coming over. But your bones are always um, remodeling. It's just all over your body. You know, you're kind of always, and, and so that's what that 8% is going to. It's it's churning the, the renewing of your body. Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Anything else on that? Repairing a cell, like liver cell. Yeah, that's what that's what these are going to be. I mean, it's mainly because most of our structure and the things that we're you know we're built out of um, is built with protein. You know, fat's kind of hanging around because um, it, it's kind of a padding and a, and a safe energy storing thing is what fat's doing. Um, and, and carbs are kind of a short-term energy source, but our body doesn't have very much use for carbs. Um, what does it implement if the uh, liver cell is dying off almost, you know, from the normal range to the higher range yeah. as such? So, it's not enough protein in other places, not enough protein. Well, this, uh, I mean, what would cause that? Uh, what causes the cell dying off? I mean. So, um, well, so, I, I mean, in terms of, uh, I mean, everybody that the cells do die. Yeah, they do die, and it but just it just out of the range. Yeah, if it's if, if we're just dying off, it's just because it's the normal pattern. You know that your hair grows, and then it, you know eventually it gets long and falls out. And right. we're always redoing things, and we're turning over our, our cells. It's just the way we're built to kind of do that. And then if it's happening too fast, well now you're in a disease situation. And then, but there's thousands of diseases, mm -hmm. so right. I just can't kind of go there. So that doesn't mean that even if you take in more protein and all that, you will actually speed up in terms of recovery from the diet. That's where people argue about exactly how much protein you need. Some people say five is enough. Some people say optimal is 15. Um, and, and, you know, we don't really, it's hard to say. But 
but again, most of us in, in the West and in 